what extent is the United States of America prepared to maintain its military dominance? Has the war in Ukraine revealed any serious problems in the US military? Why do so many analysts in Washington suddenly seem so uneasy? And keep in mind that in the current geopolitical context, these questions are more important than ever. Just look at what Admiral Charles Richard, then no less than commander of the United States Strategic Command, had to say in 2022. Check it out. This Ukraine crisis that we're in right now, this is just the warm-up. The big one is coming, and it isn't going to be very long before we're going to get tested in ways we haven't been tested for a long time. Navy Admiral Charles Richard, former commander of US Strategic Command. Now, what exactly is he referring to? I don't know, after all. If the war in Ukraine has shown anything, it has been precisely the enormous superiority of Western weaponry, training, and financing with respect to what has been one of its great adversaries, Vladimir Putin's Russia. Isn't that right? So why does there seem to be so much concern all of a sudden? And is there really a reason? Well, visual politic viewers, the United States military is the most powerful fighting force that has ever existed. However, the war in Ukraine has brought to light and accentuated some very significant weaknesses that are now generating a lot of concern. In this video, we're going to tell you exactly what the five great weaknesses of the US's military capacity are, the world's largest economic, political, and military superpower. A question of priorities. The United States is at a historic turning point. Putin's Russia has the plot. North Korea is becoming an increasingly significant threat. Iran is on the verge of getting its hand on the nuclear bomb. And above all, the People's Republic of China hopes to challenge the US for the top spot as the world's great superpower. The threats we face today are more formidable than at any time in the last 20 years. Mike Rogers, chairman of the House Armed Services Committee. Perhaps that is why the United States has by far the highest military budget on the planet. However, despite this, some analysis, such as that of the Heritage Foundation, states that the readiness of the US armed forces is currently weak. The United States spends a lot, but it also has far, far more commitments than any other country. In addition, the United States spends a lot in absolute terms, but less and less in relative terms. If we take into account inflation, rising equipment costs and wages, the level of spending in recent years may not be as high. In fact, if we just adjust military budgets by the price level of each country, for example, what it costs to have a soldier or what supplies cost, the story changes quite a bit. <laughs> Notice, for example, this 2019 chart. The first column is US military spending. The second is the sum of the military spending of China, India, and Russia. As you can see, US military spending is much higher. But what happens if we adjust the budgets by the US price level? This is exactly what happens. The US superpower still spends more than anyone else, but the difference is no longer so large. And in any case, unlike other countries, the military is no longer Washington's top priority. You don't believe me? Well, look at this chart. This is how the federal budget has evolved in recent years. As you can see, the US government is spending more and more. In fact, in terms of GDP, non-military spending has grown by almost 50% since the turn of the century, from 12.6% of GDP to 18.6%. However, the same has not been true for military spending, a smaller and smaller item within the federal budget. Take a look. As a result, military spending is becoming a smaller and smaller part of the federal budget. In addition, the military budget has recently included billions of dollars for things like limiting the military CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions, which may be a good idea, but which clearly does not determine military capability. For example, this document that you see here is the implementation plan of the climate change strategy for the years 2023 to 2027. And this is but one example. Of course, this lack of priority has consequences. For example, the last major army modernization plans were carried out in the 1980s, almost 40 years ago. We're talking about, for example, the appearance of the M1 Abrams tank, the M2 Bradley, or the Black Hawk and Apache helicopters. Yes, obviously they have improved and are still ahead of their rivals, but we're talking about equipment that appeared almost 40 years ago. That is a long time. And take note because we can find a very similar situation in the Air Force. Since 1987, the number of fighters, bombers, refueling and transport aircraft has not only been reduced by more than 30%, but today the aircraft are on average much, much older. To give you an idea, the average age of US Air Force aircraft is 29.4 years. Yes, yes, that's right, 29.4 years, a whole year older than me. 
In fact, the average age of some aircraft such as B-52 bombers or KC-135 refueling aircraft exceeds 60 years. The average age of the F-15C is 37.8 years, and that of the F-16C and D versions exceeds 31 years. And yes, I know most of them are up to date, but we're talking in general about very dated equipment, and it shows. Well. All this has led many analysts to fear that the same thing will happen to the armed forces as has happened to infrastructure, that they will go from being excellent to being terribly decrepit. As Washington has other priorities on where and how to spend money, military systems will gradually age to alarming levels. In other words, the fear is that the ever-increasing social spending will swallow up everything else. Surprised? Well, we're just getting started. Pay close attention to the second major problem, a problem that the war in Ukraine has brought into sharp focus. Listen up. Warning, too much bureaucracy, not enough ammunition. Most people living on this planet know that the United States has the most powerful military in the world and has had for decades. What is not so well known is that these armed forces could face a serious problem, lack of ammunition and supplies. This is something that has been witnessed all too well in the Ukrainian war. A modern large scale war is and will be first and foremost an industrial war. That is to say, an army not only has to have the best weapons, it also has to have guaranteed supplies, including logically ammunition. For example, it is estimated that the United States has shipped about one third of its entire stockpile of Javelin anti-tank missiles and Stinger anti-aircraft missiles to Ukraine. To give you an idea, at current production rates, it would take more than seven years to replenish the stock delivered to Ukraine. In the case of the Stinger, if we look at its production level before it was completely stopped, we're talking about more than 13 long years. And the question is, how on earth is this possible? Well, the truth is that for years, not much attention was paid to the supply chain. Let's just say that the priority was to buy and develop new war equipment, new planes, new aircraft carriers, new armored vehicles. The problem is that in the absence of contracts, the capacity to manufacture ammunition and weapon systems that were not so in demand was reduced. We spend a lot of money on some very exquisite large systems and we do not spend or focus as much on the munitions necessary to support those. Nobody's buying the weapon systems necessary to engage for anything other than a very, very short term battle. Gregory Hayes, Raytheon's chief executive. The point is that the army apparently didn't need it either. Of course, when we cast our minds back to conflicts like Iraq or Afghanistan, where the military superiority was so clear that there was no need for large deployments. However, if on the other hand, we think of China and a hypothetical conflict in Taiwan, things change completely. In such circumstances, the need for ammunition could far exceed current stocks and production capacity. For example, according to a series of analyses and war games developed by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, a leading US think tank, in the event of a clash with China, the United States could run out of long-range munitions and precision-guided weapons in less than a week. That is precisely what explains news headlines like this. US Navy looks to drastically increase missile production. The problem is that turning this around takes a long time. It requires skilled labor, investment in new factories, or expansion of existing ones, building logistics networks, and so on and so forth. Remember, for example, the case of the Stinger missile, the CEO of Raytheon, the company that manufactures it, said that resuming production of that piece of equipment would take no less than 18 months. To make matters worse, it is not just the United States. The vast majority of its allies are in a very similar situation, thus multiplying the problem. Let's take, for example, a look at the case of Ukraine. Look at it. According to many analysts, this country could and should be firing at least 250,000 artillery shells a month, but they are firing less than half of that number. Why? Well, because the 12 European companies that manufacture the necessary ammunition barely have the capacity to produce 650,000 projectiles in a whole year. And in the case of the United States, production stands at approximately 20,000 shells per month. That is not even the end of it. It's also very difficult to find some basic components that are manufactured in the United States and not in countries like China. This is considered a clear risk for national security. For example, in September 2022, all deliveries of new F-35s were halted for a period of time. They found a Chinese-made alloy in some components. Well, at this point in time, the Biden administration included in its budget request to Congress an increase of more than 50% to purchase missiles and ammunition, with the idea not only to replenish the stock delivered to 
Ukraine, but also to start re-establishing the supply chains. Along these lines, the production of artillery shells, for example, is expected to increase by 500% in just two years. When it comes to munitions, make no mistake, we are buying to the limits of the industrial base, even as we are expanding those limits. And we're continuing to cut through red tape and accelerate timelines. However, do you think that this is where all the problems in the production chain end? Well, you are very, very wrong. Take a look. Pentagon's dated budget process too slow to beat China, new report says. Catch up. China is getting new weapons faster than the US. Basically, the time it takes the Pentagon to identify a need and award a contract has increased sevenfold since the 1950s. Let's just say the process has become too slow and cumbersome. Um, I would tell you anecdotally, that China is still, after gains we've made in the last five years or so, about five to six times faster than us in acquisition. And in purchasing power parity, they spend about $1 to our $20 to get to the same capability. And this brings us directly to the third major problem of the US military. One we've already told you about here on Visual Politic, the hyper concentration of the sector. Check it out. <laughs> The Control of the Giants Since the fall of the Soviet Union, the number of prime contractors has gone from more than 80 to basically these five major groups you see on the screen. Not too many years ago, we had five times as many contractors and there was more competition and more creativity. Ken Calvert, Republican congressman from California. In other words, what President Eisenhower calls the military industrial complex in 1961 has now come under the control of a handful of giants. Practically everything goes through them. For example, whereas 30 years ago, the Department of Defense could count on eight suppliers of military aircraft, today it can only count on three, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. In the case of missiles, the number has gone from eight to three. Today, 90% of US missiles are manufactured by only three companies, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon. And in certain cases of subcomponents, the situation is even worse. The Javelin, for instance, is based on Aerojet Rocketdyne's advanced solid propellant rocket engine. There's no alternatives. If this company has a problem or a production process fails, then it's game over. Another company, Williams International, builds the turbofan engines for most cruise missiles. Without this fan, there are no alternatives. And we could go on with a long list of examples. In other words, competition has been reduced, and you know what that means. Less innovation, more cost, less spare production capacity, fewer jobs, and much more dependence on what may or may not happen with a particular company. But do you want a concrete example? Well, according to US government data, small companies generate 16.5 times more patents than large corporate giants. However, over the last decade, the number of small companies in the US military industrial complex has dropped by 40%. But as we have already talked about this issue at length in a video, that I'll link for you in the description. Let's move on to the fourth major problem facing the US armed forces today. Any idea where this is going? Well, stay tuned. Ivan et Niaj. Manpower, plain and simple. There is a labor shortage. The United States is going through its worst recruiting streak since 1973. Figures show 2022 was a bad year and 2023 looks set to be even worse. For example, in the 2022 financial year, the army fell 15,000 troops short of its troop target. In 2023, the number of troops may be under by about 20,000. Thus, it is expected that the 2023 fiscal year will close with about 450,000 troops compared to the slightly more than 500,000 troops that are considered necessary. And it's not just the US Army. The rest of the armed forces are in a very similar situation. Even the military academies are being affected by this crisis. For example, applications to the Air Force Academy have fallen by 28%, those to the Naval Academy by 20%, and West Point by 10%. This is exactly what explains news items like this. Navy cancelling early discharges and offering extensions to keep more sailors in uniform. Visual politic viewers, in the United States, there are jobs. The unemployment rate is at practically historic lows and it shows. Competition for young workers is very high and the armed forces have not escaped this dynamic. But that's not the only problem. 
The pool of young people fit to join the military without needing any exceptions is getting smaller and smaller. Vision problems, asthma, mental health, obesity, background. Since 2016, it's gone from 29% to 23%. To make matters worse, for various reasons, the armed forces are not experiencing a high point in terms of popularity. Some surveys show that the level of confidence in this institution has dropped significantly in recent years, making it a much less attractive proposition. Trust in US military remains below 50% survey. About 48% of Americans say that they have a great deal of trust in the military, slightly up from 45% last year. Confidence in the US military has plummeted in recent years. In 2018, about 70% of Americans said they had a great deal of trust in the institution. And finally, we've got the fifth major problem, no less than this. New threats and new needs. Let's see, don't get me wrong, despite all the problems we've seen, the US military is still on another level. However, that doesn't mean that they don't have cracks, as you've seen they do. Well, on top of all of these problems, we have to add another issue, the new operational needs. We've talked about this in a bunch of videos here on Visual Politic. China is modernizing its military at full speed and has an increasingly aggressive foreign policy. Russia has just become a very unreliable adversary that has also suspended the New START agreement that aims to limit the total number of deployed nuclear war Heads. The Ukrainian war has exposed many weaknesses that now urgently need to be overcome. North Korea is becoming a growing nuclear threat, and Iran seems very close to getting its hands on the bomb as well. Northcom, US to assume increased risk against North Korean ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missile in 2025. All this will entail such things as having to multiply the missile defense system, because these new capabilities are already aimed directly at the United States' own territory. And guess what? While in the 1980s, the Reagan administration announced the Strategic Defense Initiative, popularly known as Star Wars, which called for hundreds and hundreds of satellite-mounted ground and space-based interceptors, today, the United States is barely more than 40 ground-based interceptors. Catching up will, of course, take a lot of money and a lot of energy, and this is just one example. And so, although the United States is the country that spends the most on defense and has by far the best and most powerful military force, these are the five major problems that the US armed forces face today in order to achieve their main objective, to continue to maintain an enormous military superiority over any adversary. Of course, having at your fingertips the B-1 and B-2 bombers, the 180 F-22 stealths, the F-35, the Apache, the Ohio and Virginia class submarines, the Tomahawk missiles, the Nimitz and Ford class carriers, the Abrams, the more than 400 HIMARS or the nearly 1,000 M270s make you a formidable and perhaps invincible opponent. But you can see that there's always room for improvement. But having reached this point, it's your turn. Do you think the US will maintain its global dominance for the next few decades? What do you think is the biggest problem of all? Will China catch up? Leave us your impressions in the comments and let's open up a debate. And you know, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to Visual Politic. Once again, thank you so very much for being there. All the best. See you next time.